Well, good evening, everyone, and welcome to our Help at Home Holiday Edition webinar by University of Illinois Extension. It is 6.30 Central Time, and we're going to get going. But before we begin, we do ask that you make sure your microphone is muted to prevent any background noise during the presentation. And please make sure your camera is turned off so that we can have a strong bandwidth throughout the program. Today's topic is balancing extra calories through the holidays. And we ask that if you have any questions throughout the program, please type them into the chat box. We'll keep track and answer those questions at the end of the presentation. And then additionally, please refrain from answering one another's questions as we go along. We'd like to address each question individually so that the whole group um, can hear the both the question and the answer. University of Illinois Extension is the flagship outreach effort of the, United, of the, of the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign. We offer evidence-based educational programs to the residents of Illinois in all 102 counties and far beyond. Tonight, you will be hearing from three nutrition and wellness educators with expertise in general nutrition, food safety, food preservation, and chronic disease prevention and management. My name is Mary Liz Wright, and I serve on the Far Eastern edge of Illinois uh, in the counties of Clark, Crawford, and Edgar. Katie, and I'm Lisa Peterson, and I serve in the west central part of the state in Christian, Jersey, and McCoupin, and Montgomery counties. And welcome, I'm Susan Glassman, and I serve up in the north central part of the state. I serve Bureau, LaSalle, Marshall, and Putnam counties. And I'm going to get us started, so let's begin. So welcome to Balancing Through the Holidays, and we're going to talk about balance throughout the time we spend together tonight. I'd like to ask everyone, what do you think the average person gains in weight during the holidays? You can add your gifts to the chat box if you'd like. You see some responses coming in between three and five pounds and 10 pounds. So it's commonly asserted that the average American gains five pounds or more over the holiday period, which is from Thanksgiving to New Year's Day. Yet few data supports this statement. And you'll be interested to know that according to the Department of Health and Human Services, the average holiday weight gain is less than one pound far less than thought. However, if this weight gain is not reversed during the spring or summer months, that one pound weight gain can contribute to the increase in body weight that frequently occurs during adulthood. Well, balancing takes some work. As we look at this picture, balance is compared to offsetting the value of one thing to another. And here I wanted to share with you a piece of cheesecake and a bowl of fruit. I think we all know how that balances on the scale, right? But realize that our food choices have to balance with lifestyle behaviors. And it's okay to have that cheesecake. However, we do have to balance it in some way. So enjoy the cheesecake, but also remember to enjoy the fruit. Um, and keep in mind, that balancing through the holidays is very important for lifelong health. We're also going to talk about willpower and skill, skill power. Excuse me. Holidays are the Super Bowl of food. And if we look at buffet tables or crispy potato lockies on a plate, who could resist those, right? You see the picture here of the referee and he's singly, signaling a touchdown, but what does your touchdown look like when we talk about balancing extra calories? So we can use our internal motivation, our willpower, which helps us try to eat more vegetables or make meal plans, but sometimes willpower may not be enough to carry us through. And so be on the lookout for a new term and that's called skill power. 
our internal motivator, our willpower, may need some help. So add some skill power to help us maneuver through all those delicious foods we love to eat at the holidays. Remember that skill power is built and it helps us make small changes for a lifetime of health. It would be like practicing making choices that are good for our health and incorporating these choices into our daily routine and planning on how to maintain those choices, especially when busy holiday life gets in the way. Use your willpower and skill power together to help make small changes that will make a big difference in our lifetime, like balancing extra calories. When we look at choices, I wanted to share two pictures. I did two searches. One was for holiday meals, and that's the picture on the left. And the other was for healthy meals, and that's the picture on the right. Sometimes we have a little voice on, on our shoulder that says, eat this, right? Eat this and not that. And as we look at these pictures, they're very different. They're different in portion size. And during holiday time, sometimes our portions can be larger and include extra calories. Think of a meal at a buffet. And before you get to the buffet, have a visual in your head of what your plate is going to look like. Don't deny yourself your favorites, but can you possibly shave off some calories somewhere? Could we have a half a serving or a smaller serving of something? And here's where we're going to have our willpower to try and do that, but we're going to use our skill power to help us balance those extra calories. So come to the table with a plan for continued practice of good health. And when we think of portion sizes, I want to um, emphasize that portion is the amount that you eat, like you ate two slices of bread with your sandwich. And serving is the amount that is counted, like one slice of bread as a serving. Think about portions. And when we create holiday appetizers or meals or desserts, look at portions. Studies show that people tend to eat more when they're served more. And make it easy by cutting foods into single servings and portions, like the cheese in the tray I put in the picture. The cheese cubes are cut into one serving. And this helps us stay more on track. At home, we can use our measuring cups and measuring spoons or scales, but sometimes we're eating out or we're ordering, and that's when we're going to have to use our hand for handy portion sizes. When ordering out, portion sizes can be three to four servings, and they're very different. We can look at our hand and we can estimate by looking at our palm, a serving of meat or fish or poultry. By looking at our thumb, we can look at a serving of cheese. By making a fist, we can gain what a serving of fruit is or a cupped hand can be a couple ounces of pretzels or some nuts. And then our thumb tip to the joint would be a serving of dressing. And our fingertip to the joint would be a serving of butter. So we're all equipped with our own handy portion sizing and use that while we're out and about just to keep uh, an awareness of portion sizes. And I want you also to think about at holiday time, uh, what used to be an apple now becomes an apple pie or an apple strudel, right? The apple is not just an apple at holiday time. Who would serve just an apple? Some may turn it even into a candle holder, but who would just serve an apple? Well, we show love by adding butter and sugar and sweet cinnamon and spices to apples. And during this time of year, it's all about the best. We buy the butter, we buy the sugar, we buy the pie crust, and it's okay to serve these special dishes and enjoy them. But could we also serve some apple slices? You can. Don't worry about putting just some apples on the table. You can enjoy those apple pies and strudels in smaller portions or cut back on your servings, but also enjoy your apples and don't forget to light the candles. So now I'm gonna turn it over to Mary Liz to talk about extra calorie swaps. 
Thank you, Susan. Good point. And so while we're on um, talking about making our holidays healthier and balancing, we need to think about swapping. So when you think of your calorie consumption as a budget, think of it similar to your household budget. When you want to purchase something outside of your regular monthly budget, what do you do? Well, you find the money by cutting back in one area so you can splurge in another. For example, if you want to go on vacation, you'll cook at home for a few weeks rather than going out. Well, how can we do that with food? We can use our skill power. We can swap heavy calorie laden ingredients with lower calorie options. So, for example, Stuffing or dressing. A single scoop can have up to 550 calories. Replace the butter with low sodium chicken broth. Skip the meat, maybe add a little fruit, and you have a healthier alternative. Same can be said for mashed potatoes. Skip the butter, make it with low fat milk or fat free chicken stock, and you can have a tasty dish. Well, what about pie? Well, if we're making a choice for pie, let's choose pumpkin rather than pecan. Or if you must, have a smaller portion. When you're at a party, everything is so tempting. All those fancy little finger foods, what could you do? Well, let's steer clear of pigs in a blanket. Each of those little bite-sized piggies has 4.3 grams of fat, and lots of sodium. Fruit in a blanket is a great alternative. Wrap figs or persimmons, wedges with a thin strip of prosciutto and then bake. Or go for chilled shrimp, veggies and fresh fruits. Potato latkes are a wonderfully popular dish to serve during Hanukkah, but a single medium-sized latke can have more than 250 calories. Yikes, what can you do? We'll use less oil in the preparation when you're frying it. Choose to top it with unsweetened applesauce rather than the customary sour cream. And what about caramel corn? We can buy those really big tins and they're delicious to sit around and, and snack on, but caramel corn is laden with butter and sugar. Let's stick to plain popcorn and then sprinkle it with cinnamon sugar while it's still warm. Another thought is chocolate. Chocolate is an ingredient in many, many of our holiday dishes. If we swap out dark chocolate for the milk chocolate, you get a bonus. Not only is it lower in calories and fat, but it's good for your heart and your brain. So just think about those small swaps you can make and build your skills. And two, it's really all about perception. We eat with our eyes. And look at these attractive displays of fruits and vegetables. My favorite really is that little gingerbread or non-gingerbread veggie house. This, any of these could be something fun for your children to help make. And then we all know if they help make it, they're more likely to eat it. When you go to the buffet, Again, this is the time to use your skill power. So as you approach the buffet, scan and plan. Take a look at all the offerings there and ask yourself, where can I cut 100 calories from my plate? Maybe I'll skip the bread or roll or potato or gravy. Maybe I'll choose less toppings, share a dessert, Maybe you could fill your plate with veggies first or opt for no fried items. If you choose a cheese ball, eat it with veggies rather than crackers. And ultimately, if you're asked to bring a dish to the party, make sure you're bringing a healthy alternative so that you know you can at least fill half your plate with something that's good and then add those treats, one or two or three, and don't deny yourself but make those smart choices so that you can spend your calorie budget wisely. Beverages. This is where we have lots of sneaky calories. For some reason, our culture has decided 
that beverages really are free, free food, free calories. Uh, we treat those fancy coffee drinks as if they had uh, no, no repercussions whatsoever when actually they are a Big Mac in a cup. So what can we do as we go through the holiday season? Well, let's enjoy flavored waters and spritzers. Uh, if you're mixing with alcohol, uh, use the club soda or a low calorie drink, or better yet, go ahead and make those mixed drinks, but make them mocktails rather than cocktails. Skip the alcohol, it's just empty calories anyway. Eggnog is a special treat, but you can cut it with low fat or fat free milk, add more spices, and serve it in a smaller glass for a more reasonable serving. Instead of spiced cider, serve yourself cinnamon tea. Add a twist of orange for a little more zest. And if you make punch or cider, use less sugar or use a sugar substitute. And again, add more spices. Spices can add flavor so that we're not disappointed when there's lower calories. And now to help us with some helpful holiday eating tips, I'm passing the microphone off to Lisa. Thank you, Mary Liz. Yeah, so before we jump into talking about the exercise side of our balance scale, we wanna provide you with a few more quick additional holiday eating tips where you can still enjoy everything you love, but you're conscious of your overall health and really preventing you from feeling too sluggish during these holidays. So when we have this widespread or buffet of food, we may gobble everything up right away and suddenly we're ready to jump out of our chairs for seconds or that dessert we've been eyeing for the last hour or so. But before you spring from your chair, take a few minutes for your stomach to catch up with your brain. So take a couple minutes, take about anywhere between 10 to 20 minutes to let your body kind of digest. Have a glass of water, talk to those around you, and then check in with yourself and see if you're still feeling hungry. Again, that's gonna give time for your body to digest and better gauge your own hunger there. Another tip? is when we sit down, this is when we are the most hungry. So the first thing we wanna get at is those fruits and vegetables. So eating that colorful stuff that's on your plate. This is gonna be the most nutrients on your plate. And it's also gonna fill you with fiber and other great nutrients to prevent you from feeling overly miserable later. Also has a good amount of water in it too, which will help with hydration. So as much as we love, Mary Liz touched on this a little bit, but as much as we'd love these traditional rich spiked eggnog or holiday cocktails, it does pack a little bit more punch with calories than we bargained for. Additionally, alcohol also increases our appetite and lowers our inhibitions. So that'll prevent us from controlling what and how much we're eating. So again, we're not saying you can't have it, saying just being really mindful of how much you're drinking. And also it's a good idea to maybe have a glass of water in between your drinks. And that'll also kind of slow you down from drinking too many of those calories in. And of course, living in these trying times, uh, that may lead to a lot of emotional or emotional eating or stress eating. I want you to breathe, take a good deep breath. So, and I would highly, highly encourage you to join us next week as we're going to be talking about managing stress through the holidays, same time, same place, but really taking a few deep breaths, going for a 10 minute walk, take a stretch break, write down things you're grateful for. It's just take time to remember to breathe through these holidays. Alrighty, so moving on from that, talking about staying active. So staying active during the holidays can feel like a struggle for some, but one way to make sure that you are keeping your tinsel toes moving is by planning ahead and making it being active less of a chore. So try including the family, such as building a snowman, dancing to holiday music, ice skating, weather permitting, of course, or even having a scavenger hunt around your house after the feast. And again, that's not just looking at the kids. I mean, even adults love to do that kind of stuff. But make sure you do go and bundle up if you're going outside and walk around the neighborhood and take in some of the lights and maybe even sing while you're out there. Another fun idea is playing holiday charades, so getting the whole family involved. And you may wonder, well, how does that mean physically active? Well, if you put in that bin Rudolph or a sleigh ride or building toys like elves, you'll be surprised just how much you're moving. And we do have a handout that you'll receive that gives you a few other ideas for how you can move a little bit more where you're not just focused on how many minutes of exercise am I getting. So that's one thing to think about there. Alrighty, 
But if you do wonder how much activity should I be getting, the 2018 Physical Activity Guidelines for Americans recommend moderate intensity physical activity at least 30 minutes a day, five days a week, or you can do it in a big lump sum of 150 minutes per week. When I see that number, I think it's really taxing. I'm like, 150 minutes per week? That's a lot. But you can also break this down further. That's why up here I put 30 minutes a day, five days a week. But you can actually break it down into 10 minute increments as well. So maybe you'll do three 10 minute sessions Monday through Friday. Um, we're gonna talk about in our next slide here in a second, but if you're gonna bake a pie, spend 10 minutes while it's in the oven, walking briskly around the house. And we're gonna, like I said, provide a few more suggestions in a second. Um, you could also, if you don't wanna do moderate activity, the other option here is an hour and 15 minutes of vigorous physical activity per week, or even a combo of the two. Maybe you're doing one day of moderate, one day of vigorous. But keep in mind, one minute of vigorous activity is the same as two minutes of moderate. So I've said those words a lot, moderate, vigorous. So of course, what does that mean when I say moderate intensity aerobic physical activity? What that means is you're when you're being moderately active, you're working hard enough to raise your heart rate and break a sweat. So one way to tell is if you're in moderate intensity aerobic activity is that you should be able to talk, but you will not be able to sing. Uh, this is kind of fun to do, especially if you're on a walk, but embrace your inner caroling. And if you're out there, if you can sing the chorus to Frosty the Snowman, you may not be quite to that moderate zone you wanna be yet. So you might wanna pick up the pace just a little bit to get to that moderate. When we talk about vigorous activity, that means you're breathing harder and faster and your heart rate has gone up quite a bit. I'm doing the talk test for that one to gauge the intensity. This would be something where if you're active at a vigorous level, you won't be able to say more than a few words without having to pause for a breath. So these activities are things like jumping rope, um, hiking uphill, or like a kickboxing class or an exercise class. That would be examples of vigorous intensity aerobic activity. So along with getting that moderate or vis vigorous activity weekly, adults should be doing some muscle strength training that involves all of our major muscle groups on two or more days a week. That could be using weights, resistant bands, or even your own body weight, as these activities also provide additional health benefits. So again, if you're completely new to exercise or doing some of the being a little bit more active, start slow, make a plan for yourself, and kind of just add a little bit at a time. And that's one way to kind of get going when it comes to being more active. So when we talk about tips for moving more, especially during the holidays, um, preparing for family to arrive for the holidays, cleaning is an excellent workout. So washing windows and floors for 45 minutes to an hour counts as moderate intensity physical activity. So turn on some holiday tunes and get your cleaning while you're burning away some of that stress. Another thing is if you love baking, so I mentioned this one, don't lose a minute of it. So all that pie bakes, walk around the house, march in place, if you're waiting for water to boil, do some lunges or some squats, grab some of those cans of vegetables and do some bicep curls there. Or if you're feeling super flexible, like my image up there, um, try doing some yoga in the kitchen as well. Um, one easy way to sneak in extra steps in the evening is walking in place or pacing around your house during commercials of your favorite holiday movie, or you can always make a game of it. This is always kind of fun. For example, every time they say Christmas in Christmas vacation, have everybody in the family do five jumping jacks or five knee lifts, or they have to pace five times. So then they're paying attention to the movie, but you're still moving. So that's kind of a fun one. Um, another way to stay motivated is to use a fitness tracker. So this is a great gift to yourself or an early Christmas gift here. There's so many different varieties of this on the market. Some will vibrate at you to move every hour. Others will let you compete with family members or friends, or you could simply use it to track steps. And a general, general guideline is roughly about 2000 steps is equal to about a mile. Lastly, consider making a plan on how you're gonna stay active and that fits your schedule. And if it helps you to personally set a realistic goal, like walking so many steps a day or spending 15 minutes on Monday and Thursday lifting weights while watching a movie or even going for a walk and going through four holiday songs. So that would be roughly about 30 minutes. But maybe your goal is even just to maintain and not gain through the holidays. So do what is best for you when we talk about being active. Additionally, 
wing our weather is so beautiful right now hopefully it stays this way as we get closer to christmas or to the holidays is take a walk enjoy that seasonal weather on a nice day so do some research and see if you can find the local trails so you can enjoy as a family go walk the high school track or just walk around town these all count towards your exercise goals and they're a great mood booster the national institute of health says if you can walk a mile in 15 minutes they deem this as moderate physical activity um, do remember to layer up as we get colder here, wearing gloves and a headband or a hat and keep your head warm, especially. Um, additionally, if you are a runner, look for fabrics that we that wick sweat off or we consider these water resistant. What happens is cotton tends to trap sweat against our skin, causing you to get cold in that open air. So these are all things to think about when we're being active in the winter and especially spending time outside. And now, Rather than thinking of exercise as another thing on your to-do list or a burden every day, try to reframe it as me time or stress relief time or mood boosting time. There are so many benefits to being active, but especially during the holidays, exercise releases hormones in our body that makes us feel jolly, which is great, or happy. And they can also help relieve stress in that way. It gives you more energy so you can spend more time with your family and friends and getting all that holiday shopping and wrapping done without feeling extremely exhausted. Exercise is also a great self-esteem booster. So when you're, when, you're boosted, when you're boosting your energy levels, your oxygen capacity, your muscle tone, and overall fitness, a side benefit is really that self-esteem. So just the success of making a plan to get in a little exercise and sticking to it gives you a really good feeling of achievement. So if you're struggling with sleep, which about 40 to 50% of Americans are, the great thing about exercise is it does help you fall asleep faster and you get more quality sleep. Additionally, regular exercise can help you live longer. So some studies have shown a 20 minute walk after a meal helps lower that blood glucose level in people with diabetes. And of course, it also provides protection exercise does against cardiovascular disease, osteoporosis, arthritis, and some cancers. So taking a look at this list I have up here, and you don't need to put it in the chat box or anything, but more of just a self-reflection, thinking about why is being active important to you? Is it something on this list? Is it something else? But this may be a helpful reminder to put on your refrigerator, not necessarily that you have to work out at 3 p.m., but saying why. So this is even putting it on your phone in your calendar, saying this is gonna be my me time, I'm gonna feel better, I'm gonna feel less stressed, just that additional reminder to help keep you motivated. And lastly, there's more to the holidays than eating food. Um, if you wanna use the chat box, we'd love to know what, the fav what your favorite part of the holidays are aside from food. Um, whether it's just simply being with family and friends or watching a movie, you know word for word every year. This moment will never come again, so we want you to enjoy it and take it all in. This is also a great time of year to embrace mindfulness. So food tastes better when we eat with all of our senses. So paying attention to that smell, texture, flavor, and color of what you're eating and be aware of what you're eating. So remember that ch with chips and salsa, they are, they're just gonna bring you more out there. So these are the times we're really gonna be using our skill power and really finding that balance and trying to get a little bout of movement throughout that day. Be accountable to yourself, enjoy all food in moderation and if you do overeat or aren't as active as you, as you wanted, remember, tomorrow is another day and another opportunity to jump back into a routine. So we want to thank everybody for joining us tonight. And we do truly appreciate it. I am going to quickly copy and paste a link to our survey in the chat box here. We would really appreciate if you'd fill it out for us. And that'll directly link to the handouts for tonight. There we go. And does anybody have any questions? Susan and Mary Liz, you want to jump on in with me again? <laughs> sure. Uh, Lisa, I did notice one question. And sure. the question was about milk chocolate versus dark chocolate. Ooh. And dark chocolate is considered better for you. Um, the flavonoids and, and the other uh, good, good stuff in that dark chocolate um, can be good for your brain as well as your heart. And so uh, it also doesn't have as much milk fat in it uh, that the milk chocolate does. So, so choose the dark. Yes, and I do see, and I will post, somebody asked about the link for last week's. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna post our website to where to get those. We have the recording on our main website and the handouts are on there too. 
So let me make sure I get that in the chat box for you. So if you go to that website that I just posted and scroll down to recorded webinars and news, you'll find the last week's webinar as well as the handouts as well. And yeah, don't forget to join us next week as we talk about making a list and checking it twice with Diane Reinhold, another one of our team members, who's going to be talking about managing stress during the holidays. Yeah. Yes, don't forget to join us. And thank you to everyone for being with us tonight. We love all of the great responses in the chat box, and we hope that you have very happy holidays. It looks like we do have another question. Is it better to eat fruit first uh, before more solid foods? Um, well, you know, that's, that's a good question. We recommend eating fruits and vegetables first uh, because their nutrition value is, is higher. Uh, they're also going to keep you uh, more full. So uh, I, I really don't think it matters, uh, but we do recommend eating the fruits and veggies first. Right, and that's again, when you're the most hungry and you're really gonna fill up on those nutrients and that fiber. Yeah. All righty. Well, thank you everybody. Thank you and everybody. 701, so we kept it thank to our half you. hour. Yes. <laughs> Happy holidays, everyone. Happy holidays. So good evening to everyone. We will be starting in just a minute at 6.30, but welcome. And we're glad you're with us for our webinar, Jolly Good Cooking for the Holidays. And we have a question in the chat box. If you wanna think about what your favorite holiday dish is, you can add your answer. And we'll be starting in just a moment. And welcome to everybody. You guys are making me hungry. <laughs> Ooh, somebody said cream caca. I love rosettes, making cream caca and rosettes. I use that a lot. Mm. So again, welcome to everyone. And we will get started at 6.30 p.m. Central Time. And welcome to our first Health at Home Holiday Edition webinar by University of Illinois Extension. We are going to get started, but before we start, please make sure that your microphone is muted to prevent background noise during our presentation and your cameras turned off to give us some strong bandwidth throughout tonight. Um, as I said, we have a question in the chat box, so you're welcome to add in your answer what your favorite holiday dish is, and we're reading as we go along. And you can use the chat box to answer questions or to ask questions tonight, and we'll keep track of the questions and answer them at the end of the presentation. Don't worry about answering each other's questions, just enjoy the presentation and we will provide you with the most up-to-date research-based information. For those that may not know, University of Illinois Extension is the flagship outreach effort of the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign. We offer research-based educational programs to the residents of Illinois in all 102 counties and far beyond. And tonight you'll be hearing from three of us. We are all nutrition and wellness educators with expertise in general nutrition, food safety, food preservation, and chronic disease prevention and management. My name is Susan Glassman, welcome. And I serve Bureau LaSalle, Marshall, and Putnam counties. My name is Lisa Peterson, and I serve in Christian, Jersey, McCoupin, and Montgomery County in West Central part of Illinois. And I'm Mary Liz Wright, and I serve uh, you in Clark, Crawford, and Edgar counties on the far eastern edge of the state. Thank you, Susan and Lisa. 
And without any further ado, let's dive right into our jolly holiday. So we know 2020 is an unusual year and it's not going to get better within a short time frame. So how can we celebrate? How can we carry on those traditions when we cannot gather in person? How can we feel connected? How can we carry on those traditions? How can we make it special? Well, what about a cook together Zoom call? So why not? Think about this. Step one, choose a recipe. So do you have special family dishes that are required for every holiday? Enlist the help of your family to decide what is special. Select a recipe. You might have to take a vote. We recommend choosing something with a moderate amount of prep time. You uh, might not want to make grandma's rolls with a four hour time frame, but you could make grandma's cranberry salad or Aunt Bessie's noodles. You decide. And then once you've decided, here you go. Set a Zoom call on your calendar. You be the host, send out the invites. And once everyone is together, be vigilant in cooking together. So what we need to do is make sure that you're sending that recipe out a few days prior so that everyone can gather the appropriate ingredients. And then you yourself as the host need to set the stage in your own kitchen. So set out the ingredients, utensils, bowls, any equipment that you will need to make the recipe. Wash your hands. Cover and wash the hands of anyone who's going to be helping you, particularly little people. Uh, cover your device with plastic wrap because you're going to have your, your device, your laptop, your um, iPad, whatever, sitting so that it is very near where you're working so you can all watch one another. And we don't want to splash any batter or have greasy hands to touch that screen. So cover it with plastic wrap. You as the host need to make the recipe step by step. Go slow. Make sure everyone is keeping up. Remember, some of your fellow cooks will be making this dish for the first time. So take your time. Make it fun. Throw in a story or two. Maybe reference where the recipe originated. Tell the story about the first time you ate this dish. How old were you? Where were you? A problem might arise in that the recipe uh, in its original form might serve 20 or so. And if you are <clears throat> celebrating the holiday with just your nuclear family, you probably won't have 20 sitting around your table. So what can you do about that? Well, have no fear. Extension is here. We provide you with a table in the handouts that you will be receiving at the end of this program that tells you exactly how to take a recipe and cut it in half or even cut it into thirds. So just look for it in the handout. One thing that is a little bit tricky though is how do you divide an egg? If a recipe calls for one egg, but you wanna make half that recipe, how do you divide a whole egg in half? Well, crack the egg into a bowl, whisk the yolk and white together, and then measure out two tablespoons. That should be about half an egg. Store the remaining egg in the refrigerator and use for scrambled eggs. What we want to focus on is how to have fun together in the kitchen. Don't stress. Focus on mindful eating, dividing the tasks, and relaxing. Invite your children into the kitchen. Oh my, it will be messy. That's right. So what? you're making memories. And in fact, if you're doing the homeschooling gig right now, there are all sorts of lessons to be learned by cooking, measuring, uh, the math involved, small motor skills, any number of things. And you will be surprised at how eager the children are to help and how willing they are to try new things if they have been a part of the creation. Another thing to remember is Get creative. Have you always made cookies with your extended family? Well, you still can. Go ahead and make a couple of recipes in your own kitchen. Have a virtual cookie show and tell. Or 
make a couple of batches and have a drive-by cookie swap. As I said, be creative. Now, how do I make the entire holiday meal when I've only brought dessert for the last umpteen number of years? That's, this is a true stressor. What we want you to do is breathe. Your menu does not have to be exactly the same as your annual extended family holiday. Make a list. Decide with your nuclear family what dishes are essential. And don't think you must make everything from scratch. The grocery store does a fine job with many of our side dishes. And there's no law against using a pre-made something. Cook ahead. Get, get organized. Make those salads and casseroles a few days ahead of time. And then either dress them or bake the casseroles on the day of the holiday. And divide up the tasks. Again, there's no rule that says you have to do it all. Everyone in your family can be a helper. Even the littlest people can help set the table, create decorations, help with food prep. It can all get done. And relax your schedule. Remember, keep it simple, sister. You don't have to cook fancy or complicated. Master, oh, sorry, this is from Julia Child. You don't have to cook fancy or complicated masterpieces, just good food from fresh ingredients. And with all that in mind, now Lisa is going to share with us some very important food safety information. Thanks, Mary Liz. Yeah, so as we move on here, oops, let's make sure we're moving on here. The last thing we want during the holidays is for someone to get sick, especially from food. Um, the biggest and the best way to prevent foodborne illness is something that we are all very, very familiar with at this point, and that is hand washing. So really making sure that you're washing your hands for that whole 20 seconds before prepping food. And I'm talking not just the main dish, but we're talking about those desserts too, making sure everybody in the kitchen's washing their hands really well. And if you're tired of singing, Twinkle, twinkle, little star, or happy birthday for those 20 seconds. Throw in a holiday tune and start singing Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer or Jingle Bells as you're washing your hands. So I do want to briefly, other than just washing hands, I want to talk about the core four when it comes to food safety. So the first thing up there I have is clean. So again, the importance of making sure we're washing our hands, we're cleaning surfaces, any cooking equipment we're using, and using that soap and water to do that. Another thing to think about is using paper towels to clean up kitchen surfaces. But if you do use cloth towels, make sure you wash them on the hot cycle in your washing machine to um, remove any of that harmful bacteria on there. Um, when we're talking about cleaning, the one thing you don't have to wash, and we say this quite often, is meat. So washing meat spreads that bacteria throughout your kitchen. There is no need to wash your meat. The bacteria you want to kill is on the inside and not on the outside. Like I said, you're more likely to spread it throughout your kitchen. Um, Cross-contamination is how bacteria can be spread and why we separate that raw from cooked food and why it's so important there. But next one up there is separate. So we wanna separate our raw meat, our poultry, seafood, and eggs from other foods when we're first in the grocery store. So making sure we're keeping those separate straight, right away. Um, grocery bags are another thing is when you bring everything home, make sure you get it in your refrigerator and keep it separate that way. Um, another thing we want to worry about when we're talking about separation is using one cutting board for fresh produce and a separate one for raw meat, poultry, and our seafood. So again, using those separate cutting boards really helps prevent that cross-contamination. Um, one another thing I have up here is one fantastic and inexpensive stocking stuffer is a food thermometer. A lot of people don't have them, and that's one thing that's a great thing to throw in a stocking and that we want to be using regularly and having it where you can see it in the kitchen. So the cook side of it, make sure we're cooking our food to the correct internal temperatures and checking it to, with that food thermometer. All your leftovers, no matter what the leftover is, should be cooked to 165 degrees. Um, even though our meat turns brown, that color is not an indicator of safety. Additionally, when we're last or lastly here, when we're talking about keeping cold foods cold in our refrigerator, Make sure we're popping our meat, poultry, eggs, and other perishable foods in that fridge when you get home from the store. And then after cooking food, you're storing your leftovers in the refrigerator in those shallow containers. Um, as we get closer to the holidays, this is also a great time to make sure that your refrigerator is at 40 or below. So 40 degrees or below. 
So one thing is to get an actual refrigerator thermometer, so not the one built in, but a separate thermometer and put it in the warmest part of your refrigerator, which is usually near your refrigerator door and see what it comes in at. Is it actually coming in at 40 or below? And this is where you'd adjust your refrigerator temperature as needed. So that's the other big part of the core four is making sure that we're keeping things cold and our refrigerator is cold enough. All right. And one other thing we talk about before we get into the swap side of it that Susan's gonna talk about is a little bit on eating the batter. So one of the most tempting things to do when cooking, especially when you have kids in the kitchen too, is to lick that batter, but say no to that raw dough. Um, although the eggs are one of the most commonly known or thought culprits, when we talk about this harmful bacteria, that raw flour in there also carries E. coli that can cause food, food poisoning. So some of those symptoms from these bacteria can hap any, happen anywhere from six hours to six days after you eat it. So it's not always immediately after you eat this, you take a lick of the cookie dough, it may happen almost a week later. And some of those common symptoms are things like vomiting, diarrhea, and severe stomach cramps. So just to be a little bit more aware of that too, that one lick can make you sick. Um, another tempting examples, other than I talk a lot about cookie dough here, but licking cake mixes, I know banana bread, that's one that's always tempting. Um, pizza doughs, tortillas, biscuits, and pancakes mixes. So again, we wanna make sure we cook those and we're not eating the raw batter. Um, if you really, really love cookie dough, some companies and stores do offer edible cookie dough that's been heat treated. They heat treat the flour and they use pasteurized eggs or no eggs, but always check the labels and read them carefully to make sure that it's meant to be eaten without baking or cooking. So if you do have a family that loves eating cookie dough, this might be a good alternative to have on the side while you're baking your cookies. Um, in keeping with preventing, preventing our getting sick from that eggs and flour, we want to make sure that we're keeping the eggs and flour away from ready to eat foods. So food that foods that aren't going to be cooked. So making sure we are washing our hands, surfaces and equipment that may touch that flour and that eggs. Because again, those are raw ingredients and we don't want that bacteria to travel or make any of us sick. All right, so some last minute food safety reminders here is I just talked a little bit about eggs, but always use pasteurized eggs when making eggnog, hollandaise sauce, and Caesar dressing. Um, other foods, these are, and other foods that typically have raw eggs in them. Most eggs are not pasteurized, so definitely read the label really carefully. Using raw, unpasteurized eggs puts you at risk for salmonella. Uh, if you do not use, use unpasteurized eggs for your eggnog, you can cook it. Just make sure you get it up to 160 degrees using a food thermometer to destroy any potential um, harmful bacteria in there. Um, another thing is when we're talking about getting the family together and we're all sitting around the table talking and we've eaten, uh, one suggestion I've given is put a timer on your phone or on the kitchen for two hours. So that way you know to put that cold food away or put that hot food away because then that harmful bacteria starts to form after that two hour time frame. Um, another thing that's forgotten about with this is pies also fall, can fall into this two hour time frame. So homemade chiffon, pumpkin, and cream based pies should also be put in the refrigerator after two hours and shouldn't be left out at room temperature. So again, that's the homemade stuff. Um, the last one I have up here, for the most part, when we talk about leftovers, they can be kept for about three to five days, such as mashed potatoes, cooked vegetables, um, while things like stuffing, seafood, and gravy, it should actually only should be kept for two days. So I have on my slide here uh, a picture of an FK, and that's something known as the Food Keeper app. And it's done by the USDA. It's a great um, app for your smartphone. And I know in the information, the follow-up email I'm going to send, I'll give you a link also to easily get to these apps. They're at no cost, but it's great for trying to figure out, well, how long can I keep it? And it's got a search button on it. But that's one way, one thing we really advertise when we're talking about how long or how safe are our leftovers. So getting in a little bit more into our leftovers here is leftovers are great. They're delicious. And I honestly think some foods like soup, for example, taste better on that second day. Um, Susan's going to talk about next a little bit on repurposing leftovers, but make sure you store them in those shallow containers. So again, no more than two to three inches deep. So if you're using Gladware, those bigger containers, look for the smaller ones for your leftovers because it'll cool your food faster. And plus they reheat faster that way too. Another thing is as tempting as it is, cooling leftovers at room temperature is super dangerous. So make sure that you are putting them 
in those shallow, shallow containers and refrigerating and freezing right away. Okay, so when it's time to reheat, all of our leftovers, like I said, need to be reheated to 165 degrees. We use a food thermometer to make sure. Uh, one thing you can do is cover them, which can prevent that spatter and it will help that food retain moisture when you're microwaving. Also remember microwave is not the only way to reheat leftovers. I know that's the one thing with my family is like, I don't like leftovers because we have to microwave it. There's no law saying you have to microwave it. You can put it back in the oven or on the stove. And some foods actually taste better when they've been put in the oven. They're a little crispier than putting them back into a microwave. All right, I'm gonna pass that spatula on over to Susan, who's gonna <laughs> talk about repurposing some of these leftovers. Susan? Great, thanks, Lisa. So I'm gonna put a question in the chat box for everybody. Um, what are some ideas for making over leftovers? Would you guys like to share some ideas with us? We'd love to see that. And the one thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna try makeovers with leftovers. And this can include uh, Thanksgiving as well as all of the different holidays coming up through December and the new year. And the one thing that I want to express, oh, I love everything coming in. That's great, turkey tacos and turkey wraps and soup. It looks great, guys. Um, the one thing is just be super creative. And if you want to explore some new ways to do makeovers, um, reach out, maybe have a chopped competition in your household and see what you come up with with some of the ingredients that you have left from holiday meals. We shared up here that we uh, have a recipe on our blog, which is live well, eat well, and it's for turkey nachos with cranberry salsa. Doesn't that sound good? And then on our recipes for diabetes website, this is one of my favorites, is uh, a turkey meatball with like a cranberry sauce. And so that would be a nice makeover with some of our leftovers. And if you want to look at those recipes, um, I'm going to add in our website here. So you can always go in there and find everything that you would need. And it's called um, go.illinois.edu backslash nutrition well. And that's our website that you can get our blog and the recipes for diabetes um, and look at some of that. But there's some great ideas that you've shared in the chat box and I love seeing everything, the turkey and the brie cheese and yum. Like I didn't eat dinner yet, so you're all making me super hungry. Um, but we're gonna talk about some simple swaps and this is a way that we can cut back on sugar and salt and fat and add good nutrition like extra fiber during the holidays. And um, you can add simple swaps if you'd like to as we go through, but easy, we want it to be easy and we want it to be healthy. And so everybody is probably familiar with substituting applesauce for fat in recipes. You would substitute half applesauce to um, the uh, measurement of, of fat. So like one cup of oil, you instead you'd use one half cup of oil <clears throat> and one half cup of applesauce. And so you can substitute that out and cut back in the fat and add extra nutrition from the applesauce. The one thing to remember is you could pick the unsweetened applesauce um, to cut back on the sugar a little bit there. And then choose lower fat ingredients like low fat dairy. So low fat sour cream, um, low fat cream cheeses, you know, a half and half instead of full cream and cut back some of those calories that way. And then make some skinny gravy. So let gravy um, solidify a little bit with the fat on the top and skim it off. And then you can thicken it with a slurry like a cornstarch and water mixture and add some fiber for healthy digestion. So use whole grain bread for dressing and stuffing. Um, and the one that I love that we're gonna share is make smaller portions even for cookies. And so we have found that most people, regardless of the size of the cookie, will take two cookies and they'll eat two cookies, not even realizing it. So we're gonna give you a little swap that you will get half the calories when you cut the cookies into smaller sizes 
and you still get your two cookies, but you're really only eating one. And you don't have to tell that secret to anybody, but I think that's a great idea and I'm gonna try it myself. Um, remember that no one's gonna know if you cut back a little bit on sugar and salt and you can reduce sodium by one half in recipes. You can also choose to use salt-free seasonings um, and you can also cut back sugar by one third in recipes. And so with that, with cutting back on sugar, so if your recipe calls for a cup of sugar, you would use two thirds of a cup and then add some other flavorings to give you the sweetness, like some cinnamon or vanilla extract or almond extract. And you can tell, um, you, can, you can't even tell that you've done a swap there and cut back on the sugar. And then use smaller plates and dishes. So how small can we go, right? Um, a couple years ago, there was a fad of doing kind of individual tastings. There was a lot of individual tasting dishes that were on the market, which I loved, or tapas. But I put the picture here on our slide for you to look at it, just doing some single serving type of foods for people or for yourself um, to have a little taste but in smaller portions. And so those are some simple swaps we can do that are easy and healthy. And some other is we talked a little bit about seasonings, but um, use herbs instead of salt. So parsley and thyme and savory herbs are going to add a lot of flavor. You can also choose citrus like lemon and lime and orange. You could add a splash of vinegar or a little chili for some spice. But for example, you could squeeze some lime on cucumbers or broccoli or mango, and it gives it that nice flavor and tang um, and decreases the sodium. And then if you're watching cholesterol, um, go ahead and buy things that help you. Buy the egg substitutes, or you could use two egg whites. Uh, to help reduce cholesterol in recipes and keep on a healthy plan. And then uh, add some whole wheat flour to your flour. You can substitute half whole wheat to all purpose flour and add in that fiber, which is good for good digestion. So here we have some pictures of some of the recipes that we have shared in our handout that you'll be receiving this evening. And don't they look good? First, I want you to look at all the beautiful colors. And we've added extra nutrition with lots of vegetables and fruits. Um, on the top corner up here, you're going to see the red and the green with a red cabbage and apple slaw. It has dried cranberries and Granny Smith apples, and it has a vinaigrette dressing. But that's a nice, healthy um, meal that you can add with lots of fruits and veggies. We also have cucumber feta bites with fresh dill and crumbled feta cheese. And then Grinch kebabs, which are so cute, such a fun snack for anybody, made with fruit. And then gingerbread. And this gingerbread is made with pumpkin. And so there's less oil in it. And from what I've heard, it's delicious. And when you make it, you're going to enjoy the beautiful smell and aroma in your home. And these recipes we'll be sharing um, in our handout. But those are some ways to incorporate some of those swaps and those healthier foods um, and fruits and vegetables into the holidays that are coming up. And as we gather around the table with our household, um, remember to enjoy this time. It may not be normal, it's not what we're used to, but it's in itself special. Um, it's one time that we're going to have these um, moments to make memories together and try not to make the memories um, with all the food all the time. Um, think of some other things that we can do to savor the moment. And so we're gonna talk in our next slide um, with conversation starters, but Think of some things that you can do at the table um, to participate with the meal and to share together and tell stories. And we've added some conversation starters. So we have a list of things here. These are also gonna be in your handout, 
but you could make up some cards for the table and do some drawings and um, use that as some fun activities during holiday meals, um, like choosing like what was the best part of the day and if you could travel, where would you go if you were if you could have any superpower, which one would you choose? So lots of things to add together and pull for nice, beautiful holidays coming up at home. So we're going to finish up with, I can't believe it's already almost seven o'clock. 30 minutes goes so fast. Um, but we wanted to make this short and sweet and give you lots of information. We're going to give some time for questions. And then also, I'm going to add our link here to the chat box um, for everybody. And this, once you grab this link, you're going to be able to go in and do our survey. And from that survey, you'll receive the handout. So they all go together now. And before I share that, are there any questions that we've had? And you guys are, are um, welcome to type things into the chat box. I see one about evaporated milk in place of cream. Yes, I use that a lot. And you can even get the fat-free evaporated milk. It works wonderful in place of cream. That's a great one to share. Thank you. Okay, so I'm going to share this link here. And that's going to take you guys to the survey. Um, when you complete the survey, remember that you'll go right into the link for our handout. And we want to thank everyone for attending tonight. And we hope you get some kitchen time for jolly cooking. Next week, we're going to be talking about balancing extra calories through the holidays. And remember that this has been recorded and it will be stored on our website um, for further viewing. So thank you to everyone. Yes, thank you. Thank you for joining us, everyone. We look forward to hopefully you'll join us next week as we talk about yeah, balancing those calories. Yes, thank you. I, I loved reading all of your uh, ideas for uh, leftovers and then also your your favorite holiday foods my goodness i'm like susan it made me hungry yes that was really nice to see all of that added oh there's a question well. what about alternative milks i i think you can probably use alternative milks any place that milk is called for however some of them tend to have flavors um so you know you'd want to watch that yeah, and I've cooked with a lot. I've cooked with alternative milk. So I've done pumpkin pie with almond milk and I did the vanilla almond milk. It was delicious. Mm -hmm. So just yeah, I would think the vanilla in baking, yeah, would be good. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I've done it with oat milk too. And I've made um, pumpkin pie with it just to test it. And it worked just fine. So, I mean, yeah, most milks usually are okay for substituting. Sometimes I'll even use a little bit of um, sugar-free coffee creamer and things with some flavoring that works as well too so mm -hmm. yeah and that's one thing if you're trying to cut out sugar especially when we talk about like things like coffee adding cinnamon can really bring out those flavors and nutmeg especially try to bring those holiday flavors in if you, when we're cutting down on sugar <laughs> oh. but yeah yeah any other questions yeah. well thank you to everyone and we hope to see you all back next week when we talk about balancing extra calories so yes and please fill out that survey you will get an email to you as well and honestly as fast as you fill out that survey it'll automatically yep. direct you to those handouts yes yeah, so after you go through this survey you're going to see a blue arrow and you're going to click on that and it's going to take you right to the handout yep and do you want to share the link one more time there susan for anyone i can yes here it comes again. Yeah. And I will be emailing it to all our participants as well, as well as some yeah. of the recipes Mary Liz or Susan talked about as well. There'll be links in your email. But yeah. All right, everybody. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. Video can be accessed anytime on YouTube.
youtube.com. In the YouTube search bar, type in UPTV6 and look for their microphone logo. We hope you will join us again next week for more local, engaging content designed specifically for Champaign County older adults. Take care.